Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about testing. And what I'm going to go through is how I do my testing in my work today. But I'm also talk, going to talk a little bit about testing strategies. So first off, if we're talking about testing strategies, there are two main ways or two main things that you need to look into when you are going to do tests. First, you have this unit test case that I see as an help for you to develop something and also document your code. So if you're writing something and you know how it should work, but you don't really know how to do it, and you're just talking about the specific function and not the whole program, you can do a unit test that says, for these specific inputs, I expect this specific output. Uh, but if you're writing a larger program and you say, this takes a file in, and then I expect a specific file out. That's more of an integration testing and it will test the whole program and nothing, uh, not a specific function. And that's the main testing I do in my work because usually I get the file that my colleague says that this file cannot be re read or it's read incorrectly. Then I add that file to my testing repository as a test case and then I add the expected output and I'm done. Then I can start working and try to get it to work. And I have a, a lot of these tests, more than 500 of these files in, files out, and adding them easily is important for my workflow. So let's look on how I do testing in this specific way. So we go over to my editor here. First off, in the POM file, it's not that much. I just want to show you that I'm using JUnit. So this specific example uses JUnit. And if we look at the files I add in my resource directory here, I have an input and here I have specific markdown files. This is just an example, uh, but in my case, I'm working with a lot more uh, heavily, heavy uh, documents that are harder to parse and so on. Uh, but in this case, we have this title markdown, which just have a title, we have a subtitle, and we have a document that has a little bit more uh, data here. If we look at the title down here for the result, I expect some HTML output, subtitle, same, and the document, more HTML output. So that's the things I want to test, and I just want to put in more files to test my function. I don't want to do write a test case for each of these. I just want to add more files and then I should have more test cases. And in my specific uh, implementation, I have in my result file also some parameters that I will send into the program in order to make it behave in a specific way, just to make the test case a little bit more verbose. Uh, so let's see here. We can go into my test class here and I can, can show you the implementation of the, uh, the main function here as well. It's just something that will convert markdown, take a string in and a string out. Uh, if you write a full application, it will be much more involved. But in this case, I'm just want to test the specific function. And if we go into my test class here, uh, I have something called parameterized. Uh, which is a part of the JUnit test framework. And I set a private file name for this specific class. And when it creates the class, I would say that it will give it a file name uh, that it should run over. And I can also have a teardown and a, um, set up for this specific class. Uh, and then this function here is interesting. Here I have a f static function called data. And I give it uh, something that tells that this is the data parameterized function and you should give me an output that you are running the test of an index with a specific file name. And in this data function, the only thing I do here is that I uh, read data in or the specific files. So I take a class loader here. I find the result directory and then loop over all the files in this directory and create a list of string file names and sort them so I get them in the right order and then return that. 
So this is the only thing I need to do in order to run multiple tests. So if I start my test class here, you see that it starts down here. It says run um, the zeroth uh, test case, document res, and then paragraph, subtitle, and title. So it runs those tests in, uh, in sequence. And it takes a little bit of a while, a while because uh, I have actually given it a sleep, so it will take a little bit more than it actually does. Uh, if we look at this test result class here, it's not that advanced. It will uh, get the input directory where the input files are and also the result directory where the new files are. And I will get the file name from the result directory. So if I run this test ca case here, I take the file name from this specific class and that's my result file. And then I will get the input file by just taking uh, the result file, remove the end part of it, which was .res, and then add md instead, and then I will get the input file. So now I have two file objects, one for the result file and one for the input file. I use a function to read it with a buffer reader, so I get the string of, the bo of both of those files. And then I just uh, cre create a, func uh, a new class or a new in uh, instance of my class. I do the conversion. I wait for five seconds and then check that these two are equal. So I have an equal result for an equal input. So this is the whole test case uh, in order to test this and just add more files and I get more test cases. But as you say, saw here, it took a while, it took 20 seconds to run this just because I had a sleep. And this is to simulate what I'm doing at my work because some of these files that I parse are heavy and takes a little while to actually parse and work and process. So I needed to make this faster for myself. And I have multiple CPUs, so I should be able to do this in parallel. parallel. So if I take this parameterized class here and I add the parallelized, um, parallelized uh, class instead and run this, you can see that it uh, starts the test and now it says that it runs the subtitle too, but it's actually running all four in, in parallel and it just takes five seconds and some milliseconds. So that's how I can make this much faster. But this parallelized uh, clause is not something that is uh, in the framework. It's something that I had to write myself, uh, or I took an example from the internet, of course, uh, copy paste, but it's not that uh, <laughs> hard to understand the, this either. So we have a parallelized, which extends the param uh, param parameterized file, and it has a thread scheduler here, thread pool scheduler, scheduler, and I will set that scheduler to this class. So I do that in the uh, constructor for this class, and this thread pool scheduler have an executor service, and I get the setting for the parallel threads, how many threads it should use, and the default should be four. I get the integer for that, and then I will create a fixed uh, thread pool with that many threads. And when it's finished, I will run an executor shutdown and wait up to uh, 12 hours before it actually shuts down. Usually the tests will just shut down by itself, but if the, there is a test that is run, long running and has started, I want to give it a lot of headroom in, uh, in able to stop it. And then we have this schedule function here that takes a child runnable statement and just adds it to the executor. So this is the only thing that you need to have in order to run your files in parallel when you are testing from a specific input file to a specific output. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned a little bit about testing. Um, hopefully you can use this in your day-to-day -day work if you are parsing documents so you can take a specific input and get a specific output. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. 
If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.